Hello, welcome to our natural sciences lesson. Today's topic is ecosystems. Did you know that fried chicken fast food restaurants would not exist if it was not for interactions within the environment? Well, how you may ask, let's dive into the lesson and you will find out. But before this lesson starts, you need to be aware of the things that you need to know by the end of this lesson. Well, the first thing that you need to know is how to define an ecosystem. Secondly, you need to be able to explain what biotic and abiotic factors are in an ecosystem. You then have to explain what determines the size of an ecosystem. And lastly, you need to be able to explain the type of interactions in an ecosystem. So what you are looking at right now is our concept map, which gives us guidance as to how this lesson is going to go. So the first concept that we are going to tackle is ecosystems definition. So we are going to define the term ecosystem. Then when we are done, we are then going to move on to biotic and abiotic factors. You will then explain what those are, and then we are going to move on to the size of the ecosystem. We will then further speak about the factors that disrupt the balance in the ecosystem. There we are going to look at human factors together with natural factors. And then lastly, we are going to look at the types of interactions in the ecosystem. And then we are going to look at competition, predation, and lastly, symbiosis. So in order for you to be ready for this lesson, these are the things that you should be able to understand or remember. So you should understand the concept of ecosystem and feeding relationships. You should also know or have better understanding rather of the different types of ecosystems. You should also understand the role of living and non-living things in an ecosystem. Lastly, you must have an understanding of what a food web is. So here's a beautiful picture that shows us an example of a food web. If you remember, a food chain tells us how energy is transferred from one organism to the next, whereas a food web is a combination of multiple food chains. Right, so we are going to move on to a quick revision activity. Our first question for this revision activity would be to define an ecosystem. So you are going to have to define the term ecosystem and then secondly, you are then going to state how the physical environment helps to ensure the survival of species. So those are the two questions that you have to uh, already answer in your brain. You don't have to write them down because it's just a quick revision to remind us how much you know on this topic. So the first one, what is an ecosystem? So you need to be able to define that term Secondly, you need to tell me how the physical environment helps to ensure the survival of species in that environment. Right, let us jump into our solution. I'm assuming that everybody has already thought of the answer by now. So the first answer to our first question is a specific environment where living organisms interact with one another and with their physical environment. So those are the three aspects you need to know whenever you are defining or explaining an ecosystem. You need to know that it's an environment firstly, oopsie, yes. Firstly, it's an environment. Secondly, you need to remember that where living organisms interact. That's the second thing that you need to remember. And lastly, with their physical environment as well. So it's an environment that allows interaction between living organisms amongst themselves and also with their physical environment. So that is how we define the term ecosystem. Now moving on to our second question. Here they said, state how the physical environment helps to ensure the survival of species. So how does the environment make sure that species survive or they continue to live. Right, let's look at our solution here. So living organisms in an environment will drink water. Why? To avoid dehydration, because if you are dehydrated, 
to avoid dehydration because if you are dehydrated, that means you have a possibility of dying, right? So the second thing that the physical environment helps with is that it also gives us sunlight for photosynthesis. If you remember very well, plants are also living organisms. So they need sunlight, which is a physical environment or a physical feature in the environment. And then lastly, we can breathe in oxygen from the air to make sure that we are alive. Remember, during the process of photosynthesis, oxygen is the byproduct. Then that oxygen, we use it during respiration to ensure that we are kept alive. So that is how the physical environment assists living organisms to continue living or to ensure survival. Right. So we are going to move on to new terms or new words that are going to be introduced during this lesson. So the first word that we come across is biotic. So the term biotic means pertaining to life or relating to life or having to do with life. So that is the first term that we come across. The second one is abiotic. Abiotic means not living. So biotic, has to do with life and abiotic, not living. Right, the third term is a prey. So the prey, not the one that we use at church, it's P-R-E-Y. So here these are organisms that are being hunted by other organisms for food. So if it's a prey, that means other organisms are hunting it for nutrition or for food. And then the last term is predator. So a predator is an organism that hunts other organisms for the purpose of eating them. So now a prey is hunted by the predator. So those are the terms that we are going to come across during this lesson. Okay, so this is where we are going to leave it for now. I'll see you after the ad break. <music>